Hello and welcome to NeuroCircuit Written Rittenborg Crash Course. My name is Chen. Today we'll talk about part one of the cranial synostosis. Cranial synostosis is defined as a premature fusion of sutures causing abnormal skull growth and shape. And there are many types depending on which suture is fused. In general, there are two broad categories depending on how many sutures are involved. It is considered simple if only one suture is involved and compound if more than one is involved. Now changes in the shape of the head and face is usually the first sign and the only symptom. And therefore, treatment is usually for cosmetic purposes. Although some, in some instances, less commonly, synostosis can cause increased pressure within the skull. And this is especially true when multiple cranial sutures are fused prematurely. In the surgical treatment to open sutures and reshape the skull usually is done between three and six months of age. The timing of the surgical intervention is still pretty controversial, but it is determined by a few factors. If the child is too young, there will be increased complications associated with blood loss and increased likelihood of the need for redo surgery at a later date. If the child is too old, the reoperation risk is lower and surgery and anesthesia are potentially safer, but the surgery can be more challenging due to increasing severity of the deformity in a thicker and less malleable bone. Here's a quick review of the normal suture anatomy. When you take a look at the infant's skull from the top-down view, you have the metopic suture, coronal sutures, sagittal suture, and lambdoid suture, with the anterior and posterior fontanelles. These sutures eventually fuse and the fontanelles eventually disappear and becomes the normal adult bone that we know of. When a suture closes and the skull bones join together too soon, the baby's head will stop growing in only that part of the skull. And in other parts of the skull where the sutures have not joined together, the baby's head will have compensatory growth. And when that happens, the skull will have an abnormal shape. Here's a list of the types of the cranial synostosis that will be discussed in this video. In terms of the simple cranial synostosis, the sagittal suture is by far the most commonly involved. And this is followed by a unilateral coronal synostosis and then a bilateral coronal synostosis, a metopic and lambdoid synostosis. The compound cranial synostosis is defined as any cranial synostosis that involve more than one suture, so two or more sutures involvement. And as in general, as a whole, the incidence of the compound cranial synostosis is about 14%. When the sagittal suture is fused prematurely, as shown here, the growth is restricted in the perpendicular plane and compensatory growth will occur forward at the coronal suture and backward at the lambdoid suture, giving the respectively prominent forehead and the prominent back of the head. And thus, the head will grow longitudinally and grows narrow like a boat. And hence, this synostosis is also called scaphocephaly, which is Greek for a boat head. And another name for this type of synostosis is called dolicocephaly. And dolico is Greek for elongated.
when the coronal suture is fused prematurely on one side, growth is restricted longitudinally on one side, and compensatory growth occurs forward at the contralateral coronal suture, giving its characteristic skewed or oblique look. And hence the name plagiocephaly, with plagial meaning skewed or oblique in Greek. And this is named anterior plagiocephaly because a fused lambdoid suture can also cause a plagiocephaly, and that synostosis is called posterior plagiocephaly. The skull takes on a characteristic shape seen from the front, in which it causes asymmetry between eye sockets, giving the impression that normal eye is smaller than the eye on the side of the fused suture. The forehead is flattened on the side of the fused suture on this side with compens compensatory frontal bulging of the opposite side of the forehead. The frontal bulging pushes the eyelid down on the normal side, giving the contralateral side or the fused cranial synostosis side a raised eyebrow appearance. There is also an elevation of the superior lateral corner of the orbit on the fused sutra side. And this is called the Harlequin eye. The term is derived from the appearance of the eyes on the Harlequin mask with their exaggerated superorbital margin. Now, the Harlequin is a character in an Italian improvised drama performed by masked players. But if you're like me, who is not much of a literature buff, I remembered it with another character whose name originated from this Italian character. His name is also Harlequin. When both sides of the coronal sutures are fused, this leads to a compensatory growth along the sagittal suture and widening of the head. This leads to a broad and flat forehead and a flat back of the head and also leading to a tall and wide head, and hence the name brachycephaly, or brachy meaning short in Greek. This synostosis is often genetic and is associated with syndromes such as Appert and Cruzan syndromes, and they're both craniofacial syndromes. There are many diseases in this craniofacial syndrome category. But for the purpose of the board exam, the most important ones are Cruzan and Appert syndromes. And in particular, know the differences between the two. Cruzan syndrome is the most frequent, most frequent craniofacial syndrome, and Appert is the second most common. Both are diseases of the first branchial arch diseases. And the first branchial arch is the precursor of the maxilla and mandible. And hence, the, these diseases will lead to craniofacial abnormalities. Both of these diseases have many similarities and hence are very difficult to tell apart. Both are autosomal dominant and have a mutation in FGFR genes, and their clinical features are very similar. But know the differences with Apert's having syndactyly, which is a condition wherein two or more digits are fused together. There is also in Apert's 
diffusion of the cervical vertebrae. And in the case of the cranial synostosis, aperts usually present with brachiocephaly. And the cruzons will usually have more than one suture involvement. The cruzon syndrome will also have less severe mental retardation, but more chance of a hydrocephalus, and so therefore more chance of having neurological symptoms. This is part one of the cranial synostosis video. I will see you next time.